Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel where today, something I think we can call long overdue. We're here at the Museum, and alongside my SF90 Stradale, we have a 296 GTS. Today it is time to reveal the spec that I've chosen for the new GTS, which will be here shortly. This is a car from HRO and Ferrari, where of course I've ordered mine. It's here to visit. I've experienced one of these before. It is a fabulous machine. It is gonna be living alongside the SF90 Stradale and some future Ferraris in my collection. But today I'm gonna to take this out for a drive, get back behind the wheel, keep the roof down, if weather permits, but crucially, let you know exactly what I've chosen in terms of the spec. We're gonna run through the details, the colors. I think it's something I've kept under wraps and it's not gonna to be too long until my car is actually here. In fact, it's already in build in Maranello. It should be here in around two months or so, but before it lands, let's go through it all today and talk about the future Schmimobile Ferrari 296 GTS. <laughs> It is really interesting having these two cars side by side. A bit of foreshadowing for the future, except that spec for the GTS is about as polar opposite as you can get from what I'm going for. It looks beautiful, don't get me wrong. Blue Corsa, this color that was launched back with the 488 Spider, especially when it's alongside Blue Electrico on the SF90. They look very, very nice together. But in terms of the spec, the paint color is completely different. The wheel options, the interior, the trim elements, the exterior paint colors, everything about this is different to what I'm going for. We'll get to that in a moment. But to talk about these cars, Ferrari's first hybrid was the LaFerrari and LaFerrari Aperta, of course. But their first series production hybrid is the SF90. Four liter twin turbo V8, three electric motors, two up front, one at the back, a thousand horsepower. Of course, my SF90 is a Stradale, a coupe. The 296 introduced the Piccolo V12, the little V12. It's a V6 engine, 2.9 or three liter V6, twin turbo with one electric motor at the back, over 800 horsepower. But of course, GTS, Spider convertible. So we've got an all-wheel drive V8, we've got a rear-wheel drive V6, a coupe and a convertible. You can see how in the garage these are two very different cars, very different experiences, which is why they're going to be here together as we go forward. Now this spec is very me, I'm not going to lie. Blue Corsa, especially here, is bang on over the Sabia interior, looking glorious in the dual tone, the Nero and Sabia. It's a very very pretty looking thing. In fact, the whole car is a very pretty looking thing. I remember when the 296 GTB was introduced and I've been lucky to see the cars in the early stages to drive the Coupe and the Assetto Fiorano to also drive the GTS in Italy as well. It's a magnificent thing. It's genuinely one of the most usable, enjoyable, dailyable Ferraris that you could ever imagine existing. It's such a pretty car to look at as well. The links back to the 60s kind of shapes, the curves over the arches. You see it as you walk round this rear deck lid design that has that permanent piece across the back between the buttresses, the whole look and feel of it, the open top driving experience, obviously in the GTS and being a touch smaller and more maneuverable as well than the SF90, along with having more space up front, because obviously you don't have the electric motors taking up that amount of room. I think it's a car that's going to have many journeys and adventures ahead of it. But like I say, a very, very different spec. This is the car that HRO and have kindly brought over today that is so far from my color choices and spec choices. This is a metallic paint. I've gone with a flat paint. This has carbon wheels. I've gone for the forged or aluminum wheel. This has a very light interior. I've gone for a darker interior. This has things like unpainted calipers. Mine has painted calipers. This has the standard exhaust tailpipe. Mine has the uh, matte black tailpipes. There's a lot to dive into, but the super exciting thing is that as I say this to you right now, these words to you guys. My car is actually in build. We've seen it go through and the Ferrari app, my Ferrari actually gives you updates as your car is going through these processes, which is super exciting. So originally it starts out, of course you see the body before it's been painted, you see the panels effectively on the jigs being taken down through the line. Then you get to see the color of your car coming to fruition. And my car, because of a bit of the story behind what this is to me, and a color I've always wanted to do on a Ferrari, is Rosso Dino. Rosso Dino is a slightly orangey, 
flat red paint. It's a color that I think suits the shape and what the car is about. I've often said in my videos that to me, the 296 is almost a modern Dino, linking back to the 60s, which will have a nod to the plate that's gonna be going on it as well. The Dino originally was introduced to be this slightly more playful model of Ferrari. And that's kind of what this is right now. So I love the story behind that. I've never owned a red Ferrari. All of the Ferraris I have had to date, the four that I've owned and the one that's on order that you know, the Pura Sangue that I've already spec'd, which I haven't revealed yet, have all been blue. There's a scoop for you. This is gonna be my first non-blue Ferrari. So Rosso Dino is the color choice, but obviously there's a lot more beyond that to go through as well. For now, we should probably get this started, get it out, go for a short drive, tell you why it's so special, why it's gonna be alongside the SF90, and then we can get into all of the other details. I've been out a few times in the 296 GTB and GTS before. This is actually the first time I've ever driven one here in the UK. So left side of the road, right hand drive, and some familiar, very bumpy roads. Now in hybrid mode at the moment, obviously currently full electric. And I want to drive like this because I want to feel what this car is actually like in the kind of driving that I will often do with it, dailying a supercar, if you will. Now, obviously, if you want things to get a little bit more lively, you've got the e Manatino, pop that up into performance, it will kickstart the V6. It takes a little bit longer than the V8 in the SF90. Turn the Manatino then into race mode and start to downshift through the gears. There are eight of them, dual clutch gearbox, down to second gear, and then this. That is absolutely brilliant. The sound of this car's exhaust is glorious. You don't really expect that. Of course, you've got the H-pad in the center if you want to go into manual permanently. Piccolo V12 for a reason. Now, one of the things I especially love about driving this car here is that it's quite soft. Now, some of the detractors will say that's a bad thing, but to me, the fact that it's so compliant over these types of roads is what really adds to the experience. You have the Vergione Speciale that's inevitably gonna come on this platform like you have the SF90XX. <laughs> but this is just brilliant. Oh, it sounds so good. Now, big changes on the inside to what I'm gonna have. These are the carbon fiber bucket seats that you can also opt for on the SF90 and on the 296. I'm going like I did with the SF90's style seat. It's a slightly different seat in the 296, but the style seat for comfort because I'd like to reserve the bucket seats for the more track focused cars. I feel like that's more of the nature, certainly what I intend to use them for and do with them in general. So fast. This thing is seriously quick. It's just cool. And then the interesting thing here is despite this, I haven't actually pressed bumpy road, which softens it up even further. I think at this stage, I can genuinely say, as I expected when I drove one of these for the first time, this is the best current car that you can buy in this segment. There's, there's nothing that touches this. To actually use, live with, drive and enjoy. And being that touch smaller, shorter and narrower than the SF90, it's so sprightly and it just wants to, it just wants to go. Now, I didn't really intend this to be a full review, but driving this thing, roof down, enjoying the sound of it, the feel of it. This is, this is what driving is about. I mean, this is absolutely glorious. The snaps as well, second gear. When you lift off, you get this little snap from the exhaust. It's just the icing on the cake. <laughs> Even if I'm stuck behind somebody at 30 odd miles per hour. That's the thing. This is so alive. There, we've just touched 40 on a 60 miles per hour road. And it's still very, very fun. And that's something that as cars get more and more powerful, it's so hard 
for them to achieve, to still be fun in the mid rev range, to not have to absolutely floor it everywhere you drive. I mean, you can, but 820 brake horsepower, right? 830 PS. Now, the other way is to pop it into hybrid, be it automatic, just drive a little bit more gently back into E-Drive. Oh, it's, it's really nice. And you know what, when you're sat in here, familiar from the SF90 for me, the fit and finish and quality, the full carbon fiber LED driver zone, which obviously I'm going for on mine, the dual tone dashboard, it feels wonderful. The view through the back, underneath the bridge, over the top of the buttresses, the whole thing. It, it's a special experience. It's a really special experience. And I am so excited to take delivery. Driving this car right now, has just amped up my excitement levels tenfold. I, it's gonna be such a glorious thing. I actually can't wait to drive SF90 and my 296 back to back. Maybe I should drive my SF90 later, almost to, to experience that. It's just a slight lag to kick in the engine, as I mentioned earlier, versus the SF90. You really do notice that if you've driven the SF90 a lot, how it's not as instantaneous, but this is a, this is a small thing. I mean, go the other way and go full into qualifying could turn it into CT off, but we're not gonna do that today. This is HR Owen's car, manual. Drop down the gears, just let the car ahead depart a little bit. And it feels so nimble being rear driven. You're obviously aware that it's a lighter thing than the SF90. You don't have that extra feel of the weight on the steering at the front. I'm loving it. I'm genuinely loving it. This is brilliant. I am so happy. When I ordered it, people said, you know, why would you buy it? You've got the SF90. Oh, I, I can't wait. This is going to be so good. The combination of the roof open experience with this engine sound, it's easy to say, oh, it's just a V6. But you would be so wrong. It's not just a V6. I tell you what I am very conscious of and I'm acutely aware of the carbon fiber wheels. You do not want to risk damaging those, so it won't be carbon wheels for me on a car that I intend to just use and drive and obviously drive here more in the UK, less abroad, although no doubt being a Schmiemobil, it will have a maiden voyage and head off on some big journey. But you know what? We should probably get back to base and tell you about the spec I'm actually ordering. I just enjoy this too much. I just enjoy this a whole lot. It's mega. What a car. What a car that Ferrari have created here. What an unbelievably good car. What a drive, but something with uncanny timing has just happened. So when your car reaches the end of its build, you get another picture of it on its wheels. And I've just got that, which I can share with you in a moment. But before we do, I want to run through the spec, because like I said, it's very different to this car. Both 296 GTSs, this is not the Assetto Fiorano. You can order the Assetto Fiorano package, which I've not done because I see it as a road car, a road driven car. But in terms of options, this is a metallic paint with the contrast roof. Mine, as I've said, is Rosso Dino, and I've chosen to have Rosso Dino for the A pillars and the roof as well. So it's full, the orangey red. We've then got a very different set of wheels and it's quite fun because they give you this full document with all of the renders. And I'm gonna show you some of these pictures right now as well. So you can see exactly what it looks like. So I've gone for the aluminum wheels in matte Grigio Corsa, a dark gray, which we'll link to the interior we're going to get to in a moment. I've also gone for the yellow Scuderia shields along with having yellow calipers. Now I have yellow calipers as well on the SF90 and I love that look. That traditional modern Norwegian color in bright yellow, and especially against the Rosso Dino. So if we continue around towards the back exterior options, all otherwise pretty much as is. This car has the standard exhaust tailpipe that sits prominently in the center. I have gone for the satin black finish for that. I've also gone for all of the exterior carbon fiber. As you guys probably know, I love my carbon fiber. So we're talking the diffuser, we're talking the side skirts, and we're talking around towards the front, the lower splitter sections down there as well. I think we should move to the interior. Let's come and take a look in here. We have a dual tone interior, but I've done something unusual. The norm with the dual tone is to have Nero, black, and then your contrast color. I've gone for two different shades of gray. So the upper sections, the top rolls, the dashboard, uh, for example, are going to be in charcoal, which is a very nice 
uh, dark grey leather, the lower sections, like the inserts, the lower dashboard, and the seats, remember I'll have the style seats, not these carbon buckets, are going to be in Grigio Scuro. So we've got this dual tone gray contrast, which I think is going to suit this really well. And again, the renders are just brilliant and how much they show you of all of that. So we will have, like this car, the full carbon fiber LED driver zone, that carbon fiber steering wheel, and some of the other carbon inserts and different things within the car. As I just look down, what is a really, really long order form list, and I haven't mentioned the stitching. So this car doesn't have a contrast stitch, but on the seats, which will be the Grigio Scuro, I'm going to have an orange stitch to match with the exterior, as are going to be the Cavallinos, the prancing horses on the headrest. Those will be an orange. So we've got this orangey red car with the two-tone gray interior to match with the gray wheels. We're going to have some of the yellow details and the orange stitch inside. But the picture of the car at the end of the line, how cool is this, my car, that's my 296 GTS at the end of the production line in Maranello. Now, the timing is kind of funny because August is the factory shutdown month. So technically speaking, the car is probably awaiting its final sign off and handover before it will be transported. And then of course, I'm going away to the US for a while with the Zembo out there. And then I've got a tour around Europe literally the day I get back basically. So it's going to be waiting until the end of September before it's time to go and pick it up. And hopefully just in time, fingers crossed for a last little tour around Europe before the weather and everything changes. But it will be quite a different color in the garage. There's nothing really like that. Of course, the Ford GT under its crazy wrap is red. We have a couple of orange cars, the 1M in dark orange and the Focus RS in a brighter orange, but nothing in quite a red orange. So it's something different in the Schmiemobiles and something that I think fits the story of the 296. It's a lot of what this car has always been about to me, this, I want to say entry level, but it's not really entry level when it's over 800 horsepower of hybrid, full technical solutions, luxurious interior, very usable Ferrari supercar. It's just entry level in comparison to an SF90 or something else from the lineup. And I haven't actually shown on this the space up front. We must have a release just here. This is the big difference. In the SF90, you don't have any space in the front of the car. In the 296, all of a sudden, you have a boot. So you can fit a trolley bag there and another one right on top of it and some things around, which obviously changes it a lot. I've not gone for the carbon fiber in here because you don't really get to see it. It's lovely, but it's a very expensive option. So I gave that one a miss on this car. I guess for me, that would suit a front V12 type Ferrari, something like that. Anyway, I've never opted it to date on the different cars. What have I done here? Latch. <laughs> close this down, click it into place. So yes, a drive in the 296 GTS in England, and it's every bit as fantastic as I hoped it was going to be. I've been out in 296 GTBs and GTSs four or five times now, probably. This thing's fantastic, and I'm really pleased with how mine looks in the pictures. Really, really pleased. It's gonna be so cool, so exciting. So thank you very much, guys, for being part of the journey. Thank you to HRM for making it possible to bring this car out today take it for a little drive and be reminded and have my appetite whetted ahead of the arrival of mine very soon. That's it for now though. Thank you again. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.